Hi guys, you're here with none of it for Blender and this one we're going to be designing a drone that's going to be used for our new course, um, real-time environments with Unity game engine. We're going to have some nav mesh going on, some programming going on, so these drones are going to be flying around. So I'm thinking about creating some kind of a you know, maintenance drone or some kind of, a, I don't know, um, med drone, whatever, uh, flying about. It's going to be simple and I'm going to be using only cube to make it, so it's going to be fun. So. Let's grab a cube and another plane uh, cube. Uh, boom, right? And let's make it narrower, okay? So let's make it narrower and let's make it maybe a bit longer, like this. Uh, maybe longer. Okay, apply scale and add some loops here. So, that many. And let's go to um, modifier and lattice, Q and Z with your mouse. To just maybe maybe four is enough. Go to edit mode, press B and then O to turn on the proportional editing and R and make it bigger and let's just rotate it. In fact, let's let's grab more of them. There we go. G and let's move it here. So like this and now rotate it and move it down. Move it somewhere here. And rotate it a bit more. There we go. And then we do hide it for a sec. Cool. So let's uh you know let's bevel this and scroll down and uh, to one segment and wait it normals. Awesome. Let's uh now uh, go to lattice, so alt H. And let's just remove these old colors. Let me just get rid of them. There we go. Let's grab this one and scale it to so SX and scale it a bit here. And we could actually extend it a bit. So GY and extend it a bit, scale it a bit more. There we go. That's good. Awesome. And we could actually, you know, scale this one here. We could scale this one here on X. So grab these uh, with B. Accept this one one more time. There we go. And SX and scale it a bit here like that. Scroll your mouse and just you know scale it a bit here. So it's a bit fatter. In fact, maybe you could just do something like this. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Alright, let's just uh, do that and then go here and scale this one. So SX and scale it. Mm, this area cool and make everything a little bit wider okay now let's recover the lattice and let's move these two a little bit higher so it's gonna be thinner and let's move these ones you know a little bit lower like this so now we need another cube and we're gonna create um, a cylinder so uh, control alt click on these and control B and if you clipping like this you just press c and then apply um and i think we have what is it how many segments is this eight segments i think i want eight segments okay press c and then press three to clean it and just in case and then we go into sx scale this this is way too big so move it somewhere here and scale it down and scale it out like this that's a little bit too thick Okay, and move it somewhere here, like that. This one should be thicker in my opinion, so what we could do is grab these walls and GY and move it. Let's turn this proportional editing GY and move it a little bit here, like that. So it's a bit thicker, and there we go, that's better. And I think this is a bit too thick on X, so there we go. Control A and apply scale, apply these two. So control B and chamfer it. Uh, like that. Select these two and inset them right click and bridge. And if you cannot bridge, it means you need to install loop tools, which is a blender add-on. I think it's a little bit too thick. GY and you know 
yeah that's better and we need to rotate it a bit so let's apply it operations and multiply and we're gonna you know rotate it a bit and move it somewhere here like that and we could grab this front and press all g and actually scale it a bit in the front here a little bit cool and then we can cut it so you know sharpen shifty and basically difference uh, and uh, let's apply it so operations multiply and select this one control l and remove verts and we're done all right so we got this going on here which is cool and we need to move it down so shift d and gz and ry 180 and we're gonna scale this a little bit and you know put it somewhere here like that and I think I'm going to move cursor to here and rotate it on the cursor somewhere here like that and maybe grab this piece here and slightly you know let's just individual origins and yeah rot move it somewhere down here there we go that's better something like that uh, now this one should be a little bit higher so gg and move it up here press all there we go something like that now we got a bit of bending here but it's normal uh, we probably could you know fix it a little bit with some loops here a little bit i think that's better copy to the other side there we go so that's that and this one is a little bit too you know too thick i think so we could just you know scale it in a little bit and move it down a bit jz and sink it in and uh and there you go and that's cool this one is maybe a little bit too, you know, too thick, so it could be a little bit more narrow. Something like that. Now, I'm not sure about this, to be honest, so I might actually fix that by removing these. And removing vertices and... Uh, throw on time and scale this in. I think that's better. And move it down a bit right and what we could do is round it up a bit here like that that's better it's a bit more smooth right so now uh we can you know align ourselves here if it doesn't work for you what you need to do is go to q st3 mesh to align i have it set to control q shortcut what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna rotate it uh, here with uh, holding control and scrolling my mouse and I'm going to use end on to cut it so I'm going to cut it here so select it and cut it and I think I'm going to cut it like like this and press B for bevel and X and slice it and I need to do it in view mode otherwise it's not, not going to work so one more time B and X and slice it. Boom. Mirror, mirror, done. Select these two, shift S to geometry and scale it. And, you know, scale it a bit more. And create something like this. Which is going to be quite interesting. This bevel here is a bit too crazy after the cut, so I need to make the bevel a bit smaller. Because it's overshooting also there's some uh, geo issues so let's remove this edge and there you go um, this whole shape could use a little bit more you know more segments so we could just make it a little bit you know more dense here so maybe something like this you can manually you know add a bit of few segments and kind of make it flow a little bit better see same here so we could add a loop here and maybe one more loop here. Maybe I was a bit too stingy with the loops. 
Yeah, that's a bit better. This bevel here is also too big, so we can just, you know, make it smaller. There we go. And here we could just have another cut. So we could actually cut this one off because it causes some issues. So let's just cut it off. And we could have a cut here as well, like this. All right. Interesting. Let's recover this cutter. Let's recover the cutter and bevel. Huh. Fascinating. Let's just add the bevel here. There we go. And then uh, we're going to add some cuts here on the top. Maybe add two or three cuts here. Something like that. And here in the front, we're going to add another cube and we're going to press Ctrl 2 or Ctrl 3 actually. Actually, Ctrl 2 so it should be enough. And, uh, you know, uh, smooth it. And we're going to add a cast sphere modifier. Operations and modifier and cast. Let me let me just see that. And then apply all modifiers and sharpen it. So we're gonna have a sphere out of cube. Now if you you know probably need another subdivision. Yeah, there you go. Um, so drop it somewhere here and make it a bit smaller and uh, to be somewhere in the middle, let's just move it to cursor and then GZ, so it's gonna be in the middle and move it somewhere here and then shift D and make it smaller. So, this is gonna be you know a lens in the middle or something, All right? And then we're gonna have one more, so shift D and make it really small and put it somewhere here, you know, something like this, okay? Cool. All right, now this bottom is a little bit, you know, a little bit rough. So let's grab it and control Q. Then we're going to cut it as well. I'm going to go in and cut it out of an angle. It can be angled. This is a little bit too deep. There we go. And, you know, to the other side. This one is a little bit too close for comfort. The bevel is too crazy as well. So let's grab this cutter and, you know, just move it a little bit here. Boom, sorted. The tip could be a little bit more aggressive as well. So we have something like this, okay. This one could be slightly sliced. So what we could do is grab this and shift curve extract and SX. It's a little bit too thick. So modify, solidify. And then what we need something inside here. So let's grab this one inside here. Let's just, you know, bevel this like this, Q and Altium macro move it outside like that grab a loop here and select all these and let's just uh control click on curve extract let's go to local select all of these double click on i sx to scale it and e cancel with run mouse button and do that actually we can just scale them a little bit like this right and then select them and control i to invert it and delete faces so we got this and copy to the other side right and then we simply can make it a bit bigger if you wanted to so select one of these and shift G and parameter and you could scale it to the middle on cursor so grab a cursor and you know scale it to the middle like this so that will be it guys and um, this 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 here could be a little bit better to find to be honest I might actually remove these and you know scale it a bit more here like that and then bevel mm. i don't know maybe i don't need it at all yeah that's a little bit boring maybe something like this oh that's cool peachy now texturing is, you know, is easy. You just um, texture everything with one texture and then we're going to be adjusting it. Okay. So first of all, what I want, I want a base color to be white. Okay. Oh, come on. I want it to be white. All right. And I want it to be metallic, slight, non-metallic, slightly rough. And I want some clear coat and clear coat, coat roughness. It's going to be slightly reflective. Also, let's change this to something a bit more interesting like that so we can see reflections. Cool. 
Uh, this one should be the same color. Probably, you know, bits of that I want to have blue. So let's just go here and click this. It's going to copy material, go here and make it a bit blue. It's perfect, maybe a bit too saturated. So, you know, drop it down, like a pastel blue or whatever. This one could be blue as well. So copy, this one could be blue. So copy, this one could be dark and a little bit bigger. So individual origins and alt am at blank mat. Uh, well, shouldn't be metallic, but it should be reflective. And it should be really dark. There you go. This could be a light, so alt am I'll click on uh, material to add the light. And this could be a warmer light, so, you know, add some strength here. Boom. And uh, this could be blue, that's cool. And also we could have some cylinders here in the bottom. So what we could do is uh, grab another cube and, you know, um, here, let's just cylinder that and six will do. Press three to clean it and S scale it, shift Z and scale it some more. Go to side view, do something like this, move it in here and then scale it a little bit. So I insert it and it extrude it. That's cool. And add some bevel. All right. And, you know, make it smaller. And we could have some kind of, a, I don't know, devices sticking out here. It's going to be looking pretty cool. All right. And it could be blue as well. Just saying. Boom. Awesome. Now the interior here should be, you know, flashy so let's just add another mat and a new and change it to emission preferably blue and strong wow that's too strong maybe something like that and a sign boom so we got that and then what you can have here you can have some trims so just you know grab one of the trims uh, we have a lot of trims from the blender bros courses so we can just grab something something cool like i don't know this out click on it so let's control scroll through it and see what we're gonna get here hmm oh it's pretty cool that's not bad here the same just select this and q and if you actually could just you know select this one and we could actually drop some loops here like this right and remove this one in the middle and then run a trim here so d and out click on trims i'll click on something here and control scroll through it and see if we can find something cool something simple because we cannot have you know too many complicated trims around here this one is a little bit too complex i think so let's grab something simpler like this one maybe see oh that will do perfect so mirror this and bob Jonko. right and then we could have some decal here maybe from the latest uh, patron pack that is a really cool pack not oh, this one will do you know drop it somewhere here just and here and the project right and then D and adjust and boom put it to the other side you could change color of it as well if you wanted to um, this needs to be flipped so go to mare and data and flip PG we could have some trim sheets on these fuckers as well so we could delete them so when i'm going to alt d that they're gonna be you know sharing the data um between themselves so if i'm gonna run some trims here it's gonna reflect on the other one so let's say i'm gonna run one of these trims well these are cool if you would like to learn more about hardups and box cutter we have a free course on our website link in the video description you can 
I also get there a free PDF file with all the shortcuts. The most important shortcuts for hardos and box cutter. I know that a lot of people struggle with this, so we created something for you guys to, you know, make it more uh, simple to learn it, more easy. And also we have uh, another type of membership on our website. It's a new new thing from this month. It's kind of like a Patreon, but with more perks. So you still can go to our Patreon if you're interested just in courses. But we also have our membership, which is a bit more advanced version of Patreon. It's mostly because Patreon simply doesn't offer as many tools that we would like to use. And the site is lacking a lot. So we decided to create our own type of Patreon on our own website. Now we call it Blender Bros Coaching and Community, which is, you know, that's what it is about. It's about exchange of knowledge and basically learning together. So anyway, thanks for watching, guys. See you in the next one.